Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel and thanking all my subscribers for their support. And if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, please like, share and um, subscribe. Um, there's so many people out there who this information may or may not benefit. Um, and when I talk about immigration issues, I mean, today it's talking about immigration issues in a hostile environment because, you know, it's come to my attention yet again, the injustice of the system and how there are people who've been here since they're five, to, you know, half of their life they've been here. And every year, every 30 months, they're having to pay £2,033 in order to get a limited leave to remain. It's draining their pockets, it's making them feel unstable, they feel as though they could be kicked out any minute. Well, can you imagine every, every, I mean, it's just over a year, every 30 months you have to find 2,000 and then it increases and the processes change. And the thing is, is that you can be legally in the country and if you um, do something that's incomplete on the form or if you're a bit late, already you've thrown yourself in a vulnerable status. Already, after all that time, you become illegal. Even though you've been legal all that time, just a, just a mistake can render you illegal. Now what they're doing with asylum seekers, they're making them take this test. And um, asking them about, you know, one guy, he didn't mention Plato and Aristotle as humanists. So they threatened to deport him because they're saying because he said he's a humanist, he should know about Aristotle and Plato. And, you know, they've got such weird questions that they're asking these people. It's almost like they're trying to trip them up. Why would anybody think about, when you're thinking about um, questions about England, why would you be thinking about Plato and Aristotle? You wouldn't. There's also social, there's also questions on social philosophy. I mean, really, I'm born here and I don't know about social philosophy. I don't even know, you know, I've heard about Plato and Aristotle, but what do I know about them? So, you know, it's just really, really hostile. We've also got um, these people in Brookhouse. I don't know if you saw the video on BBC Panorama where somebody went undercover into Brookhouse. Brookhouse is one of those immigration detention, detention centres near Gatwick. And it's run privately by G4S security staff. And these security staff were abusing, mocking, humiliating the detainees. And so it was put on, it was put on um, the TV. And as a result, I think 21 people were called up about it. I think 11 left, resigned, or they were dismissed. And I think there's, you know, after all of that, there's about seven left still. And these seven don't have to give evidence. I mean, it is going under review, but there's nothing that people can do. They've actually recruited G4S for another two years, the Home Office has. So that abuse will or may continue. Can you imagine people who have loved ones in those detention centres, knowing that they're being beaten, knowing that they're being humiliated, and they probably don't even know that's going on because as far as they're concerned, they're just in the detention centre waiting to be deported. They don't know what, what they're going through. But apparently they're being assaulted, throttled, all kinds of stuff. That panorama thing. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but it's, a, it's called Brook House. And it was a panorama and it was to do with the abuse at Brook House, which is near Gatwick. If you have any time, you can go and have a watch. I, you know, I actually saw it when it was on live. So I haven't seen it on YouTube. So maybe it's not even there, but everything's on YouTube. So it may well be there. But I was thinking, you know, um, yes, immigration and trying to get your legal status in the UK is difficult, but it's not impossible. All you need to have is an organised mind. 
and have you know have the wherewithal to know what is required the online system does look easier than what it is the um some of the um questions are deliberately provocative sometimes there is there's um omissions to make you know that you can feel as though it's going to trip you up so you have to be one step ahead you have to be thinking about everything you write you make sure you have something to substantiate what you write just put your um lawyer hat on even though you're not a lawyer pretend that you're a lawyer and if you say oh i went to such and such a university make sure you've got the the certificate to prove it if you say you sent your kids to such and such a school make sure you have school records if you say you have so much in the bank make sure you have the pay slips and the bank statements to support it anything you say and the thing is is that even though they don't ask you for a covering letter it's always best to complete a covering letter stating your circumstances and when you're putting the information together make sure you put it in chronological order chronological order is date order so it's organized and you know even though you could upload it yourself sometimes if you haven't got an efficient um wi-fi system or you haven't got a good quality scanner it's not worth it it's probably best to go to somewhere like ryman's or staples and get them to do it for you and, and pay them a few quid or even go to the visa office i know they're charging a fee if you can't get a free um a free interview i mean the interviews i think they do free interviews at croydon manchester and birmingham I think all the other places um, you have to pay and but there again if there are no free interviews in those places you still have to pay I think it ranges from 60 pounds to 200 pounds I'm not quite sure what the criteria is I think the 200 pounds you go to lush offices and it's a bit more comfortable but yeah so they when, when you go there for your biometrics and um, stuff you could they do also um, do the scanning so you could do it there with them but you have to make sure you have everything there's no room for error there's no room for omission because you'll just waste your money if you haven't got everything correct and remember they don't tell you everything sometimes you've got to use your common sense if you say you're married, make sure you have your marriage certificate. If you've been separated, do you have a do you have a separation agreement? If you're divorced, do you have your your divorce certificate? You know all of those things. Anything you state, you need to have it supported, because if it's not, they're going to throw it out, and you would have wasted your money. So it's not impossible. It's difficult to do it online but it's not impossible if you've got the right head on you and you know what you're doing and you have you're quite savvy you you can do it so but i always advise you know people to get a lawyer if they um, have problems there is a, a a lawyer an immigration lawyer called pinoy uk international she's a filipino lady p-i-n for november over Oscar Wife for Yankee, um, UK International. Um, she, she, I, I know she wouldn't rip you off. I know that my heart tells me that she wouldn't rip you off, but she could give you some guidance and, um, you know, whatever you need. Um, there are, like I always refer you to the www.gov.uk for registered um, immigration lawyers. The Home Office also has registered immigration lawyers. So um, if you're in doubt at all, always get them to look over it. Sometimes it's better that they look over it, but you have to get someone who is interested. You don't want to get somebody who's just doing it for the money. And it's usually the ones who are not registered who do it for the money. You know, they make, they have all the mouth, the gift of the gab. Oh yeah, I can do this. I can do that. And they don't give, they don't give a, they don't give a toss about what they're doing. And it's sad to say that the lawyers like that exist. They, you know, play on the vulnerable just like anybody else. So you have to know who you're dealing with and you have to go for somebody who's reputable. 
if anything, try and get somebody who's got a good track record. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know if you heard about, oh, talking about immigrations and hostile environment, 680 Latinos were rounded up in um, America in the ice raids just over the weekend, the day before El Paso. 680 of them. They went to this workplace. They work on this chicken farm and they just rounded them all up. They all the surrounded the car park, everything. Just rounded them all up. Three vans, two for the men, one for the women. Rounded them up and sh and taken them down to the detention centre. So these ice raids are happening. They did say Mississippi was going to be one of them. They did say that. So you know, I don't know where they're going to go next. So it's like a double whammy for the Latinos. It really is to have that deportation happening and then to have that shooting. So, um, yeah, it's it's not great, but it's, you know, it just makes you stronger. And it does make you more alert. There's a lot of times when people feel as though they can't do anything, but you must at least try. Try your best to do it first and see how much you're capable of doing. You might surprise yourself because some people, they get lazy and they, they feel as though they can't do anything. And so they give it to somebody else to do. When And that person doesn't have their best interest at heart. So what you can do for yourself, you can have actually a joint cooperation. You can do the parts that you feel confident with. And then what you don't feel confident with, you give it to a third party, whether that third party is the visa office, whether it's Staples to upload your documents for you, or whether it's just a friend, you know, that you can trust and who you know will look at the documents and have, a you know, a vested interest in what you're doing and what you're collating. It's so important to have all the documents. I can't stress that because incomplete forms you get thrown out and you don't get your money back. I think that is all. Oh, and another part of this hostile, I call it, environment is that, you know, with um, the in people from India, Pakistan, well, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nigeria and Ghana, they're having to pay a three pounds in security bond to come into the UK. I don't know if they got that stopped, but that was another, um, that was another, um, what do you call it? Another obstacle then, you know, for people of colour from the Commonwealth, you know, trying to come into the UK. They reckon that these are the high risk countries. So they can't come in, they can't get a British visa unless they pay £3,000 up front. So I'm just trying to let people understand, you know, it's not just one person that they're targeting. What's interesting is that there's this guy, I think his name is David Baker. He got stopped at the airport 100 times in seven months. He's a, he's a businessman. Seven months or seven years? It has to be seven years. Can't be seven months. I'll just have to see if I can find the link. I, you know, I remember the seven, but it has to be, it'd have to be seven years. But a hundred times it was stopped. And um, when he um, spoke to the Home Office and complained, they said, well, he's got the same name as a drug dealer. And the thing is, is that the, 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 even though these people had the same names, there were different dates of birth, different addresses. So why would they get that mixed mixed up. He's actually a white guy as well. And I don't know if the person that they were looking for was a black guy. I don't know what nationality he was, but apparently this guy is 56. I don't know what the age group of the person he was looking for, but a hundred times he got stopped. And he said, it's embarrassing. It's humiliating when he comes with his partner, you know, they have to go through one gate and he's pulled over to another. And he goes to the same old investigation each time. And he reckons they stop him before it gets to the biometrics, you know, the facial recognition in the airport, because they've got the facial recognition in the airport. And they, he said that they stop him be, even before that. So he's taking up some kind of um, grievance against them. I don't know what's going to happen out of it. But surely, you know, they reckon that the electronic passports, they just trigger 
you know, but they trigger based on a name. How can they trigger based on a name? Instead of all the other elements, all the other aspects, the iris, the, the, um, the fingerprints. So none of that counts for anything. So if that doesn't count for anything, what's the point of taking them? hundred times. If I find that link, I'll put it in there. Anyway, I was just thinking about, you know, it's all part of the hostile environment policy, you know, over, you know, overzealousness of, of um, border guard staff, and, you know, lack of training and, you know, bias and laziness and artificial intelligence. All of this contribute to what's happening today to people in this country whether legally or illegally. And the irony is it's mostly the legal um, immigrants that are going through all this problem. The illegal, the illegal immigrants, I don't know what's happening to them, but yes, some of them are getting detained. But, you know, a lot of legal immigrants are going through so much grief. Anyway, like Boris said, Boris said he is going to look into it and try and get amnesty maybe it's for people like those um, people who've been in the country for so long um, he's also going to make it easier apparently for scientists foreign scientists to come in the country um, so yeah that's all i've got to say really bye bye